Good morning, Bulldogs, and welcome to Mrs. Mulder's Read Aloud for this week. Uh, this week, we are going to be honoring Native American Heritage Month, and the book that I have chose is The Legend of Indian Paintbrush, retold and illustrated by Tom Tommy DePaulo. He's one of my favorite authors. You might know him from Streganona, um, so that series. So let's take a look and read our book, The Legend of Indian Paintbrush. Many years ago, when the people traveled the plains and lived in a circle of teepees, there was a boy who was smaller than the rest of the children in the tribe. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't keep up with the other boys, who were always riding, running, shooting their bows, and wrestling to prove their strength. Sometimes his mother and father worried for him. We do that. But the boy who was called Little Gopher was not without a gift of his own. From an early age, he made toy warriors from scraps of leather and pieces of wood, and he loved to decorate smooth stones with the red juices from berries he found in the hills. The wise shaman of the tribe understood that little gopher had a gift that was special. Do not struggle, little gopher. Your path will not be the same as the others. They will grow up to be warriors. Your place among the people will be remembered for a different reason. And in a few years, when little gopher was older, he went out to the hills alone to think about becoming a man, for this was the custom of the tribe. And it was there that a dream vision came to him. The sky filled with clouds and out of them came a young Indian maiden and an old grandfather. She carried a rolled up animal skin and he carried a brush made of fine animal hairs and lots of paint. The grandfather spoke, my son, these are the tools by which you shall become a become great among your people. You will paint pictures of the deeds of the warriors and the visions of the shaman, and the people shall see them and remember them forever. The maiden unrolled a pure white buckskin and placed it on the ground. Find a buckskin as white as this, she told him. Keep it, and one day you will paint a picture that is as pure as the colors in the evening sky. As she finished speaking, the clouds cleared and sunset, a sunset of great beauty filled the sky. Little Gopher looked at the white buckskin, and on it he saw colors as bright and beautiful as those made by the setting sun. Then the sun slowly sank behind the hills, the sky grew dark, and the dream vision was over. Little Gopher returned to the circle of the people. The next day he began to make soft brushes from the hairs of different animals, and stiff brushes from the hairs of horses' tails. He gathered berries and flowers and rocks of different colors and crushed them to make his paints. He collected the skins of animals which the warrior brought home, warriors brought home from their hunts. He stretched the skins on wooden frames and pulled them until they were tight. And he began to paint pictures of great hunts, of great deeds, of great, of great dream visions so that the people would always remember. But even as he painted, Little Gopher sometimes longed to put aside his brushes and ride out with the warriors, but he always remembered his dream vision and he did not go with them. Many months ago, he had found his pure white buckskin, but it remained empty because he could not find the colors of the sunset. He used the brightest flowers, the reddest berries, and the deepest purples from the rocks and still his paintings never satisfied him. They looked dull and dark. He began to go to the top of the hill each evening and look at the colors that filled the sky and try to understand how to make them. He longed to share the beauty of his dream vision with the people, but he never gave up trying. And every morning when he awoke, he took out his brushes and his pots of paints and created the stories of the people with the tools he had. One night as he lay awake, he heard a voice calling to him, because you have been faithful to the people and true to your gift, you shall find the colors you are seeking. Tomorrow, take the white buckskin to the place where you watch the sun in the evening. There on the ground, you will find what you need. The next evening, as the sun began to go down, little gopher put aside his brushes and went to the top of the hill as the colors of the sunset spread across the sky. And there on the ground, all around him, were brushes filled with paint, each one a color of the sunset. 
little gopher began to paint quickly and surely using one brush and then another. As the colors of the sky began to fade, little gopher gazed at the white buckskin and he was happy. He found the colors of the sunset. He carried his painting down to the circle of people, leaving the brushes on the hillside. And the next day when the people awoke, the hill was ablaze with color, for the brushes had taken root in the earth and multiplied into plants of brilliant reds, oranges, and yellows. And every spring from that time, the hills and meadows burst into bloom. And every spring, the people danced and sang the praises of Little Gopher, who had painted for the people. And the people no longer called him Little Gopher, but he who brought the sunset to earth. So the authors know the lovely red, orange, and yellow, and even pink Indian paintbrush blooms in profusion throughout Wyoming, Texas, and the High Plains, and has many stories connected with its origin. The story of the Native American artist and his desire to paint the sunset was particularly meaningful to me as an artist. There are many times when I wish I could go out on a hill and find brushes filled with exactly the colors I need. Who knows? Maybe someday. The idea for doing a book on this spectacular wildflower came from my good friend Pat Henry after she had seen my book, The Legend of Blue Bonnet, which is a story of the Texas state flower. Pat is from Wyoming and the Indian paint brush, brush is the state flower. Coincidentally, Carolyn Sullivan from Austin, Texas has recently sent me a copy of Texas Wildflowers, Stories and Legends, collected, collection of articles by Ruth D. Isley, which originally appeared in the Austin American Statesman. Carolyn is a teacher in the Austin area, and in 1965, this collection was made available to teachers for their use with a unit on Texas trees and wildflowers. She too had read the Blue Bonnet book and knew my deep interest in folk tale and legend. The Indian paintbrush was a familiar flower to Texans, and in the book, I came across a brief and interesting account of how the wildflower got its name. I contacted Mrs. Isley and she graciously gave me permission to use her article as the main source for my retelling of the legend of Indian paintbrush. So I would like to thank Pat Henry for suggesting the book and Carolyn Sullivan for sending me the collection of legends and Ruth Isley for giving me inspiration for her collection. I would also like to thank and acknowledge Lady Bird Johnson, the former first lady, whose untiring efforts have not only made her home state of Texas a symphony of color with its wildflowers, but have encouraged other states throughout the country in preserving and growing native wildflowers to beautify the countryside. Tommy DePaolo. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, have a nice long weekend this weekend, and we'll see you next week. Take care, Bulldogs.